I think this trip has saved the summer. This is Dan, and it's the morning of September 19th, and I'm just driving to the trailhead for a new hike and had to stop and take in this beautiful overlook. This is on the North Fork Road on the northwestern edge of Glacier National Park and we're looking at the North Fork of the Flathead River. It's a beautiful bend in the river that's just above the Big Creek Campground. Right through that gap there is where the Camas Creek Road comes out from Glacier Park and connects with the North Fork Road. And that is Huckleberry Mountain. There's a lookout tower on top of that, but it's lost in the mist this morning. I have a fairly easy trip planned, uh, and I'm facing two extra challenges on this trip. The first is obviously the weather. This being the third week in September, in Glacier Park, anything goes. It could rain or snow or blizzard or anything, so you just have to be prepared for everything. Looks like the highs are going to be in the mid-50s and lows in the low 30s. And the second challenge is I've been having some knee problems. If you uh, saw the last trip I was on, I actually had to end it early because I was having knee pain. And it's been, that was three weeks ago, so I've been trying to heal up since then. And uh, have improved, but not 100%. So hoping to have some moderate days. So this trip takes place in the northwest corner of Glacier National Park. And that means driving up the North Fork Road uh, to Pole Bridge, where you enter the park. And thankfully... The uh, ranger station at Pole Bridge will still be open so I can get my backcountry permit there instead of the normal of having to go to Apgar uh, in West Glacier. So that will save a little time. And then I'll drive up to the campground at the end of Kintla Lake, hike along Kintla and up over the divide between that and Upper Kintla Lake. There's a campground here at Upper Kintla that I plan to stay at the first night and uh, then just day hike up here to Boulder Pass. Not sure how far through this I can go but I'm hoping to go far enough to be able to look down into the hole, of the, hole in the wall area and that campground. I've been there before but I would like to be able to see it from above. Then just come back and spend the second night again at Upper Kintla and third day hike back out. Okay, I made it to Kintla Lake. This is the beautiful campground that is at the foot of the lake. And I got the permits just the way I wanted, so happy about that. And here's the lake itself. Things are clearing up a little bit, which makes me pretty happy. The trail goes along that edge of the lake, the northern edge, and uh, right back in that V back in there. So happy that things are clearing up a bit. It's looking good. Getting close to the end of Kintla Lake, a little cloudy, and uh, you can see the little rise that separates Kintla from Upper Kintla there. Made it to the campground of Kintla Lake Head, and it's starting to sprinkle a bit. Nothing too severe, but enough to put the raincoat on.
There's a patrol cabin at the head of Kinla Lake that just sits right at the very end past the campground. And that makes a pretty nice little overhang to sit and wait out some of this rain. Seems to be letting up a bit, but there's still some coming down. You can see a little patch of blue sky there. There's the outside view of the place I'm hanging out, hiding from the rain. Rain's let up a bit, so I thought I'd show you the little river that goes in between the two lakes. Starting to get little glimpses of sunshine. So this is Upper Kintla Lake. Well, I made it to Upper Kintla, and I've got this really awesome campsite just a few feet away from the water. And the rain has stopped, and it's just a beautiful evening. Well, good morning. That is Boulder Pass and should be about 12 miles and 3,000 feet elevation gain. Just planning to day hike up there. And so 3,000 feet loss also, but the 12 is round trip. This is the food prep area. Just getting my breakfast ready. It's um, breakfast skillet and it's just rehydrating now. There's our morning breakfast rubber.
Well, it's a little before nine and I'm just getting started on the trail. Uh, it's such a beautiful morning and I had a great night's sleep and a good breakfast. And I'm just so excited to get climbing up into those mountains. I'm practically running down the trail and uh, really looking forward to getting up in there. I think that this fog is gonna burn off and it's just gonna be a gorgeous day. Uh, this is actually, I realized the first time I've done any uh, day hiking with, uh, since I switched to ultralight gear and this pack is just nothing. I left my, a lot of the, you know, uh, shelter and sleeping bag and pad and all that stuff back at the camp. And uh, so it's kind of like carrying a heavy winter coat about, it's just nothing. So really excited. My knee feels great. I don't think that's going to be any problem. And uh, one issue I did run into was it didn't occur to me that since my shelter pitches with my trekking poles, that meant I had to find a stick to uh, prop up the shelter while I'm gone since I'm using my trekking poles. So a little unusual situation there, but hopefully uh, what I did will work and hope it doesn't get too windy while I'm gone. Well, I'm pretty happy that the bridge is still here. This is over Kintla Creek. Swing-in bridge, as you can see. They roll these up in the winter time so they don't get washed away from the spring runoff. So this is probably one of the last weekends that it will still be here. Wow, that's gorgeous. Well, I'm about an hour in and my optimism for the day may have been a little misplaced. We'll see, but this is what the view looks like now. That's looking a little more hopeful. Well, I'm about halfway up, a little more than half. The trail's pretty street steep here, as I guess you would expect for a trail that climbs 3,000 feet in about five miles. And it's lifting a bit. At least I can see across the valley, and what an incredible view it is. I feel pretty lucky to be here. It's a beautiful day. That's where we came from. Well, I can feel it getting colder as I keep climbing. Got some rock steps at this point. Lots of springs coming out from the hillside. Well, I'm up high enough now to tell that the pass 
does not go through that notch. That was one of the ones I was guessing farther down. You know it's kind of dorky, but <laughs> that's one way I entertain myself when I'm hiking is trying to guess where the trail goes. And a lot of times I'm wrong, but that's part of the fun. I believe we're headed over there to that notch in the ridge. I'm just about 15 minutes from the top and instead of adding layers I've actually removed some layers. That might seem counterintuitive but my thinking is that the clothes that I have are my regular hiking clothes are quick drying synthetic clothes and I've been hiking all the way up in uh, rain pants and a wind shirt which I needed to do because of uh, the dew that's on the underbrush. If I hadn't, I would be soaked and freezing. But it also holds in the moisture quite a bit. So I was thinking that it might be a good idea just to let that dry out so it's hanging off the pack and also let me dry out a little bit. I'll probably have to put it all back on and then some just in about another 15 minutes or so when I get up into the pass and probably get some wind blowing. Well, it turns out I was both right and wrong about the pass where it goes. The uh, cleft over on the right, it did go over and work its way up through that, but that was just to get up to the next bench and then it came back over to the north. There's the cairn marking the top. At least I hope that's the top. I think so. That's beautiful. I wonder, I bet you that that's the campground down there. And there's looking back the way we came from. The larch are turning a little bit earlier up high here. So they're just beautiful colors. Well, I have to tell you that I've been a little depressed lately because I had to cancel two epic trips that I had planned for this summer just because of this little knee injury that I had. And uh, that was getting me a little bit down, but this trip makes up for it. This beautiful, uh, <laughs> spending time in this beautiful high country really is a, a big part of why I backpack. I think this trip has saved the summer. There's this beautiful saddle area in between the campground and the trail that goes over to Hole in the Wall campground. And it's, uh, I believe that hill that is in the distance is probably in Canada. The border is right there. Sure makes you want to go over and explore, doesn't it? This is the trail moving through the big saddle from one end of Boulder Pass to the other. Got some beautiful glaciers still hanging on. This is pretty cool here how the trail is lined with rocks to mark it through this rocky section. And there's a little bench 
here with some cool little tarns. And just past that is the hole in the wall area. And you can just barely make out Thunderbird Mountain. Hiked all the way over here just to get a view of hole in the wall. And there it is. Trying to catch it in between fog banks. That's a pretty clear shot though. In order to get that view of hole in the wall, I went about a mile beyond the pass and probably lost about 500 feet elevation. Moving back through that saddle again, through Boulder Pass, and it seems I'm bringing the fog with me. Looks like it had been clear here. I love seeing these ripple patterns in the rock. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that that is fossilized beach. So if you think about the way, the pattern that the waves form when they come in and out, that's just what it looks like. And so that was laid down and then other material was laid on top of it before it could get eroded and washed away. So even though we're on top of the pass, there's fossils left over from ancient oceans up here. Pretty cool. This is the setting of the Boulder Pass campsite. And there's one site. And there's the second. And there's a third one just over the hill here, I think. This is it. Pretty impressive wall to keep you feeling safe at night. And a nice view in the morning. Looks like this is the food prep area. Pretty cozy. Looking down at Cantla there. And there's the privy. How's that for a room with a view? Well, it's 3.30 and I just made it back to the beginning of Boulder Pass. And that should be okay. It might be a little tight getting back to camp in time. But they're not gonna start dinner without me, so I guess it's probably just fine. Just starting to rain a bit. I don't know if that's everywhere or just up here. But I'm looking forward to seeing more of the view that I didn't get to see on the way up. Here's at least some of the view. And that, way down there, I don't know if you can make that out. 
That's Upper Kintla Lake, where we're headed. Well, it's pretty much raining the whole way back, so not much for pictures. But, how about that? A little bit of sun peeking out. I call that hope. The sun has finally come out and the forest is glowing. Well, it's 6.30 and I just made it back to camp. Pretty good timing, should be just right for getting cleaned up and eating some rehydrated chili and hitting the sack. This has been a very full day, but extremely satisfying. This is gonna keep me going for a really long time. Good morning, all packed up and ready to head out. It rained pretty hard off and on most of the night, so sleep was a little fitful. But feeling good this morning. And it looks like things are burning off, so this might actually be the best day of the whole three days, weather-wise. Got a pretty easy day, just hiking about 11 and a half miles out and it's all along these two lakes upper kentla and kentla so fairly easy going plan on just taking my time and enjoying the last minutes of being in this beautiful awesome place This is the outlet of Upper Kentla. If anybody feels like doing some bushwhacking, there's some beautiful waterfalls on this stream that flows between the two lakes.
So I've just gotten up over the hump between lakes and moving down back to Kintla Lake. Made it back to Kentla, and now just six miles along the lake to the trailhead. Getting to be a beautiful day. Well, it looks like I'm gonna hit the trailhead right about two o'clock, which if you calculate it out is a pace of about 20 miles a day, although it was not a challenging trail at all, so I'm not going to brag too much about that. Overall, the trip was about 36, 37 miles. Not quite sure how far I went on that second day. And about 4,500 feet elevation gain altogether, although most of it was on that second day. Overall, I'm really happy with this trip. Um, the weather held off and my knee held up. So pretty happy with both of those. It did rain uh, about an hour or so each day, but not enough to really get in the way of the fun. And uh, I wore a neoprene knee brace the whole time, uh, which kind of kept the knee to a dull ache, but allowed it to function and really no nothing to complain about. So very happy with the way this turned out and man I'm just so thrilled with that high country I can't get enough of that uh, up in that Boulder Pass area so that's it for this trip and uh, if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe because there will be lots more adventures coming and now that the backpacking season is kind of wrapped up I'll be able to get back to doing uh, tutorial videos so look for those too all right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And of course, no trip to the North Fork area is complete without a stop at the Pole Bridge Mercantile to check out the bakery. And I got mine, Huckleberry Bear Claw. That makes the hike all worth it.